All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Hip Hop Heads, a podcast where me and Novak talk about our favorite hip hop moments. And we got a special guest here in the podcast. Let me see. Let me run with this intro really quick. My man is 27 years old. He said he got a couple gray hairs below average height. <laughs> Jet plane. You in the building, bro. What's up, guys? Welcome. Thank you. Yo, it's kind of hilarious that we're having this discussion about Kanye. You wanted to talk about it. That was the topic of choice. And when I was connecting with you, I didn't realize you were back in Chicago. I know you were born and raised in Chicago, but you you left us for a bit. And now you're back. Yep. Um, yep. You necessarily don't have to go too much into details there, but I I, I, I want to go off on a bit of a tangent. I, I hung out downtown last weekend for the first time in God knows how long. And my younger son wanted to do like some straight up like tour stuff, right? So we did Wendella Volt Tour. We did Signature Lounge, Pizza and Cocktails. And then we did Willis Tower Viewing Deck, of course. And um, mm -hmm. I kid you not, I kept hearing homecoming in my head, <laughs> not the glossy co-play homecoming for the yay heads out there. I'm talking the original one that was never even officially released. So yeah, man, I mean, we got to get into it. Like, I know we can talk about definitely a lot of things about Kanye for sure, but bro, like, I think we saw Kanye in the, um, the glow in the dark tour right was that like 2008 or whatever no bro we saw a touch the sky tour then glow in the dark tour. oh uh, really that you was my second i'm not even kidding you i went backstreet boys to kanye and it was <laughs> those were my first two concerts <laughs> full disclosure and i you know i'm i'm i met i had, i mentioned your age up front and i'm glad you were um willing to like divulge because i appreciate you know cats that kind of like have a respect for the hip hop game and the hip hop culture and obviously the music and you know it's, it's interesting that you know you you have i don't know i guess you have like um a, a hip hop knowledge and especially you know like admiring somebody like kanye coming up like i think that's that's a good way to kind of have a stepping stone into it you know yeah totally uh, so you were at the, you were at the touch the sky tour i mean i you know i saw watch i was with watch the throne which was awesome. Uh, we did, uh, you know, I did, I did the Sunday services recently. Uh, Sunday service was very creepy. <laughs> Just all I got to say. Yeah. You know, I never went to a church service outside with we uh, strange people in a, in a choir. You know, it was it was interesting. I went to I went to the we did the Northern Ireland. We did the Sunday service, and it yeah. was it was something interesting. You know, I took one of my guys who doesn't like go to church. Or anything like that. I don't really go either, but you know, I understand there is a church, and so and so we went to Sunday service, and uh, we're there. And he did the iconic moment. He parted. He parted the people out there with his hands and made everybody move. And my one of my cousins was there, and I didn't know she was out there, so I recorded. And I accidentally recorded my cousin at the concert, and she recorded me. And I was like, "You were there? Yeah, I recorded you. I record. I saw you there. Why didn't you say anything?" I was staring at Yay. I'm like, "Oh, stop it!" So I mean, it was. It was cool. The crowd was pretty good. It then it rained on us at the end, and he ended it and left the stage and got in his limo and drove away. I was like, "What is this?" And so <laughs> it was it was strange, but it was nice in the same at the same note. Yeah, you know, it's actually funny you bring that up. I was, you know, thinking about how what I wanted to say when I was talking to you guys here, right? And mm -hmm. not even kidding, I pop open Spotify and I'm like, "All right, you know, what songs?" I'm just scrolling through what songs do I want to talk about, what albums do I want to talk about. And I honestly have four separate playlists for Kanye and each playlist is a, okay, a vibe playlist. Okay, a like a faster pace workout playlist, a pregame playlist. And I forget what the other one is, but I, and that's to your point, I think that's like, you know, that's the guy when I was a younger kid, right? Who in my eyes, kind of set the standard and change the game. Cause like he can do right. It's like, 
it's like a basketball player, for example, who changes his game based on the way, you know, you know, the game evolves around him. And to your point about Sunday service, right? It's like, if you had told me back in grade school, oh yeah, man, give it, you know, 10, 20 years, Kanye is going to be doing Sunday service. I would have thought you were crazy. Like, what? And to, I, I mean, kind of circling back, like, yeah, it's a little bit more, it's not your traditional Kanye, but that, in my opinion, that's what makes him so great is that he's able to kind of switch gears, switch the style up, n- no pun intended, um, and kind of, you know, still sort of captivate his, his crowd. You kind of saw a comment, though. If you think about it, in a nutshell, college dropout, right? The first album. He's in a college mode, right? He's finding himself. Yep. He's talking about college. Then you go late registration. That means that's when you're in college, you get ready to get the hell out of college, and you forget to register. So you're late with your registration. And then you do graduation. When he's out of college, you get ready to go into the real world. He gets his first real job, whatever. He's going to do a good-ass job, but that never came out. So Kanye, he's like evolution if you think about like you can think about how he went from college dropout to jesus walks it's like he was trending like he was trending toward this whole gospel thing it got real spiritual like, like 808 and heartbreaks is very spiritual and then you go into yeah. my beautiful dark twisted fantasy and you listen to some of those samples he sounds with a lot of gospel music so i'm listening to this stuff sometimes you're like i hear the sample and you know, yay, I love finding his samples. I go out and I try to find every sample he's every he's lifted out there. Like you think about you think about uh the Sierra Leone track, the diamond, no diamonds basically, how he took that he took the sample from a soap opera. And I was like, this is so sick. So yeah, he, he man, his evolution is scary because we don't know what Dunn is gonna sound like, you know, compared to like Jesus is King. right. You know, the first right. gospel I went 808. <laughs> You know, it's actually fun. So now that we're talking about, you know, the progression through his albums, right? It's, Mm -hmm. I was talking with a friend of mine and he just kind of like, we're, you know, going back and forth, conversation and whatnot. And he's like, yo, man, if you could rank them, where do you rank? You know, what, how do you do it? Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly thought about it for like two days and I kind of got back to him and I was like, you know what, man, you can't because each one is its own thing. It's like trying to com- compare your favorite car to your favorite bird, which makes no sense. But like, if you think about it, right, it's, you know, I got you, you, you got college dropout, right? And for me, I heard the first time I heard the college dropout, I was probably third or fourth grade and uh, we don't care came on. <laughs> and my older brother and his buddy were kind of just like singing it back and forth. And I was yes. like, this, this guy, right? And then you kind of move forward with late registration. And I believe like, it's actually funny. I'm going to, I'm going to be backtracking all over the place and change it up. So I apologize in, in advance, but it's funny when I think about Kanye now, I remember he didn't get best uh, new artist at the Grammys. And he, he kind of took, took that personally, right. And Kanye fashion. And if you think about where he is now, in my opinion, that's like, you know, Kobe Bryant not winning rookie of the year and if you look back on his career you know I don't think Kobe gives a shit of you know he would give a shit about that right like after you know how far he's come after all the rings so now it's like in Kanye's mind like it's funny to see him start off like you know I cause dropout was a sick album right and he you know basically started to set that standard for kids my age like okay and if you look back on it now like artist of the year is the last thing on my mind like I'm trying to hear to your point all these new samples all these new Mm -hmm. like what's he he, what's he about to do next right Donda who knows Um, and it's funny to kind of see him progress from right that college dropout late registration graduation 808s and I and like as each one comes out I think to the you know to the Kanye fan right you gotta give it you know, three or four go arounds before you can kind of understand what he's actually trying to do. And I, to be honest, I still don't know, but it works. <laughs> right. And, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things back to this, like, if you're trying to rank his albums, you know, if you think about Ye- uh, Yeezus, like, that's like not even in my mind, that's not even like an, an album in a sense of like, okay, here's a song and here's a song. 
Yeezus, in my opinion, is so ahead of its time that you can't mm-hmm. even rank it with all those other ones, right? Like, you know, I, you, I'm trying to think about that first track is on site, right? And it's mm-hmm. just this synthesize. it's just this noise. And it's a dope song, right? Like I play that, you know, that comes on and you're like, oh, okay. But it's, that's like the beauty of Kanye, in my opinion, is like, you know, it, you can start, like you think he's about to, to do something and what comes out is just total. like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna flip again. Like you go into Jesus is King, right? Um, I got using this gospel playing as I'm in the gym. I mean, this, this is a gospel song and I'm trying to pump to it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, yeah. You know, he, in my opinion, he's the only one of the you know, few people who, who can make that work. Um, and that's like, so in my mind, I, you know, when I, when you guys, when Jay was like, yo, come on, you know, let's talk about Kanye. Okay. I feel like we can talk about Kanye for five days and still probably not round it all up. Um, so anyways, that was a tangent. I'll no, I, I love that. I love that. You. That's a good analysis. I, I'm curious about this is on a little bit of a tangent, but sort of kind of like nostalgia for me, right? So there's so many through lines to think about with Ye, but like when you're talking about college dropout and late registration and, you know, graduation, wait, no, what was it? Was it, um? did he call it graduation? Graduation, that's graduation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then good as that was supposedly after that. Um, that that was kind of like I don't know if it's unique to Kanye, but it's definitely unique of the time where it's like I feel like that's when CDs were still in, right? And Jet, when you're like making a joke about a moment ago, I'm checking through my Spotify playlist. Like artists now, unless you're a vinyl head like Novak over here, and you actually mm-hmm. like give a damn about the music culture and picking up stuff like that, it's all like Spotify stuff right now. So I feel like Jesus was interesting because that was a CD, but I don't think there was any cover art at all, right? Wasn't it just like it a, a picture, silver disc? It was a disc, man, a yeah. Picture of this. And then the vinyl, the vinyl for Yeezus never got officially released. They released it in Europe, and then I bought the vinyl for Yeezus, and I listened to uh, Blood on the Leaves. And, you know, it's so, you're right, it's so futuristic. It's something you make, it's something he made that's going to stand the test of time. Some music doesn't age well. Every Kanye West album ages well. Like, you know, like I don't know if you've heard Late Orchestration. So Late Orchestration drops oh, yeah, after right. uh, after Beautiful Dark. Uh, it dropped after graduation. So I bought Late Orchestration from one of my guys, brought the vinyl back from Europe for me. And I listened to Late Orchestration because Kanye has so much music that never got dropped. And you don't even get on the mixtapes. He was the mixtape master. You, you get on the mixtapes, you know, you get on like just random songs, they, put, they throw some Ds on it. There's a Kanye version, uh, West version of that pretty much with a video. And uh, I mean, he's very creative. And then he's made every artist better. You, you haven't even got to the Jay-Z effect right now because he rebirthed Jay-Z. Jay, Jay-Z's a vampire. He, he saw Kanye West, he goes, this guy's got a nice flow. So Ye stole Nas's flow, made it hot, just like what Jay did, and then he gave them better production, and then he worked with all his idols, and his idols basically became his rivals at that point. Yeah, totally. You know, it's I'm actually so glad you brought up Jay Z. I remember Jay. I'm gonna turn the clocks back a little bit. Right. We, I was driving around in, gosh, I was probably fourth or fifth grade driving around with Jay in his uh in the bungee cord Gosh, what, <laughs> what car was that jay with the radio yo it was <laughs> like either a corolla or that's a corolla uh, i couldn't yeah, get the right. trunk well, closed to yeah. save my life bro whatever it was it, it got <laughs> that soul, though. don't worry about it <laughs> and um that i'm not like that was the first time you know, I heard a Kanye song and it was H to the Izzo. So not a Kanye song, what? but it was because, and I remember Jay told me, you know, Kanye made this beat and I was like, but it's Jay-Z. Like in my head, I was, you know, just a young kid. I didn't know how that worked. Right. And um, after that, Jay popped on college dropout. And in last call, Kanye kind of tells that story about how, you know, how that came to be and his, his relationship with, with Jay um you know that's obviously super cool but moving forward honestly in my opinion it's like any like you know Lil Wayne probably still to the day Jay-Z like anyone now who works with Kanye is like 
Kanye is like the point guard who makes it all go, right? It's it's like Kanye can put his touch. I mean, you know, obviously Cuddy, right? Like Kanye can put his touch on an album and kind of like find where it's like all these kind of nooks and crannies to make it, you know, sound a little, a little bit better. It's like that Kanye touch. And ever since Jay told me that, like, oh, H to, to the Izzo, I mean, that's, I'm pretty sure that song came out before I was born. And like to the day, that's like a hit that if you hear it in a bar, hear it in a college dorm, people are always going to vibe to it, right? So, you know, it's that like, you know, where my love for Kanye, I think a lot of people, where that love for Kanye kind of comes in is how like musically like gifted he is that the beats he's made and even the beats that we probably haven't even heard, he's probably got a closet full of just stuff that he hasn't pushed out to the public yet for some because probably because it's not perfect or you know how he he kind of rolls but um one of the things I've always been so curious about is okay like I've heard the uh, albums I've heard most of the mixtapes I want to see his closet of just all the samples that he's kind of messed with but not necessarily put out in, in the public yet if, if that makes sense because I feel like that's a rabbit hole that I wouldn't come up like you, you guys probably wouldn't see me for a week and I have like bags under my eyes trying to figure out, you know, where all these, where all these samples might be coming from. I agree. I mean, like, I remember one time I'm up in rural Wisconsin. I don't know if you know about the group Bun Iver. So, Bun, so I get deep in the vinyl. So I'm listening to Bun Iver, right? And, you know, Bun Iver pretty much, you know, it's a Lost in the World track, you know, pretty much that Kanye did with them. And he did a lot. And then they had the other track, Finding Your Voice. I don't remember that. It came off, it came off a mixtape. So he collaborated with Bun Iver and he made them, you know, they already had a base up in Wisconsin. They're from, they're from the North. So basically he started sampling like, you know, independent artists pretty much from other places. You get in Bun Iver, you get into Francis and the Lights. I don't know if you ever listened, I don't know if you ever heard of Francis and the Lights Friends. It's a track where Kanye does the production, shows up in the video and does a twirl and everybody goes crazy. He does not say one word. He just spins around the video. <laughs> And I'm watching this just like, this is the most bizarre Michael Jackson-like moment you're ever going to see with an artist. <laughs> you know, he took, you know, he took artistic, artistic levels to a new level. Like, if you think about Beautiful Dark Nightmare, but you turn that into, you do Runaway, you turn that into a movie. It's insane because the album is a movie. And you listen to it, yeah. like every scene is a movie. It's a scene from that movie, pretty much. So, yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's weird. The more you listen to them, the more you understand them. I think he's about 10, 15 years ahead of the culture right now, which is a scary thing. 100%. 100%. And it's actually funny you bring up my dark tw twisted fantasy because, in my opinion, that was really the first time, to your point about it being a movie, right, and how that, how he, he released that sort of in tandem, or in tandem, right? Mm -hmm. That, honestly, it's a movie, right? But at the end of the day, like, down to, like, getting granular, it tells a story, right? Like, like that is a, look. That, that, that is in, like, that is a start, you know, middle, end story. And I think now, if you see like all these artists now try to copy that, not copy it, but kind of use that same logic is, okay, from the first song to the last song, I'm trying to tell a story about what's going on here. Beyonce, Jay-Z, they all do it now. You know, um, you, you, you think about the artistic, the artistic side of it. You know, like what I love about him is the fact that he got, you know, it went into clothing. It went into shoes. It's a he, he became co he became a cultural thing. You know, you think about it. Like even with uh, the Kid Cudi influence, think about that one. He took Cudi to a whole different level. The Man on the Moon is a classic. But when Ye gets together with him and it makes Cudi into something, he turns Cudi and he unlocks Cudi. It's almost like a video game cheat code. He puts the cheat code in and Cudi elevates. And then you sitting there listening to it like, man, listen to this. Like good music. It was good damn music. I just wish they had did more music together, but egos got in the way in that situation. Yeah. Right. So when y'all were talking about my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, um, I'm looking at the albums, right? So right after that was Watch the Throne, mm -hmm. then the Cruel Summer 2012, and then Yeezus 2013. So like, I, I hate to be keep going back to this point. Like I feel like Yeezus for me was probably the last time I actually bought his album on cd right because then you're talking about life of pablo and yay and everything else so like i feel like not only was he a, a creative genius but like the cd culture and the act of actually buying something physically tangible and then 
I also visited his pop-up store when he had it going on too, you know, not that I bought anything, but just for the <laughs> experience. Um, right. I don't know, like he's always been ahead of the culture. I don't, I don't know if, if it's fair to say if the culture will have him back. Like, I think Jesus is King is fine. I thought it was pretty, pretty dope for what it was, but did, did Kim basically draw on the Jesus and now he's ready to get back to work? I mean, what's, what's, what the, what is the future? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's um, a great question. I, I don't, it's funny you say that. I, to be honest, I think to be personally, I think fatherhood kind of kicked in there. Yeah. And he, he became dad. Yay. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you d disagree. <laughs> the dad shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I, I agree with you. He he became he became daddy yay. And you think about, you know, it took a lot out of him because you know, beautiful dark nightmares a transition to Kim. Right. <laughs> so he had just broken <laughs> up with another model, and then he met Kim, and then you and Robocop on there. He's like, he's you know, you listen to song, you listen to song Robocop, and he's talking about other felt relationships. So Ye tells the story on that album. It's a transition to that. It's like he evolved, man. He, he evolved like, you know, from uh, Beautiful Dark Twisted Nightmare. Yeast is him screaming in relief. I survived. <laughs> like, that's what it, you know, I'm a guy. You open up and I'm a guy and he's screaming. I remember the first time I saw him on SNL. I don't know if you saw that performance, the Yeezus uh, performance on SNL. And everybody, everybody didn't know what to say. And I'm reading, uh, I'm reading the Twitter remarks. Kanye has lost his mind. He is off the reservation. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what happened. Watch that performance again. He's in a zone. He's in a space that we don't touch every, every other day of the week. Right. I agree. Right. I agree. Actually, Jake, go ahead. I'll follow no, up. Yeah, my, 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 my quick thought here is um, I'm really glad that y'all are kind of geeking out on you because it's really, it's really easy to kind of like think about the caricature that he's become and I'm definitely hopeful of the future. And I know he probably got a lot of locked up goodies like, you know, Jet was talking about in his closet. The one line I think about, and there's there's plenty of quotables, obviously, whether they're on the songs or not, or Twitter rants or whatever he does. Um, the line that I always come back to is, um, I think it was in Last Call. And basically it's, uh, though the fans want the feeling of a tribe called Quest, but all they got left is this guy called yeah, West, West, right? So, I mean, he was always, he always had a foot in, you know, paying homage and paying respect, but obviously he was always innovative too. So I always think about that and he's like playing in, the, in both lanes in the, in the best way. Yeah, he got yeah, dope lines. If, if, you, if you think about the life of Pablo, life of Pablo has more quotables than any of the other works right now. Can you go in the waves? And you listen to Waves, man. The, you know, Waves is the cockiest damn Kanye West album song ever. He's like, he goes, step up in this bitch like, <laughs> it's like and you say, you imagine that this is when he's getting ready to divorce Kim or they're getting ready to break up because you can, you can see that you can see what's about to happen. He's getting ready to move to Wyoming at that point. And so you think about like Pablo, Pablo the life of Pablo is like, it's a weird album. But it's so it's the transition album. It's from him going from family man to dad to single parent. <laughs> so you can see it in Pablo pretty much. And you know, all that emotion on that album. And he talked about famous. And he was talking about if you know if Ray J didn't have Kim, it's sex with Kim. And I'm just listening to stuff like, man, it's stuff you don't say if you live with the person, you know what I mean? These are things you don't say out loud because you gotta go home to that at night. Kanye was going home at that at night, he was going to Wyoming. So he was saying everything he said, everything he wanted to say on Pablo about his relationship. And I think that's what tore that relationship in half, to be honest with you. Yeah, he's, I mean, that's a great album. I mean, Pablo, I, I, yeah. Pablo never got official uh, vinyl release, but I got that for you. That is nice. Yeah, I mean, it, honestly, you know, Pablo certainly falls in between, but like, you know, personally, every album you hear from start to finish it's like you you gotta walk you gotta like stand up and like take a lap and just like clear your mind a little bit like maybe smoke smoke a cig or something just just to calm back down it's just you know to your point right it's just mm -hmm. a lot being thrown at you in like a 
in a more positive way than a negative way, right? Because especially on Pablo, right? You have waves, you have famous, you have, you know, all these songs with hooks that, you know, just like the average, you know, if you're at wherever, college dorm, college party, bar, wherever, you know, those songs come on, people stop and you start seeing some head bobbing and, and some people get more into it, right? So, um, yeah, Pablo is something. And, I, and it's funny, I was a junior in college when that came out and he did the whole like show at Madison Square Garden, right? Mm-hmm. And you see, you know, Cuddy's there. I'm sure I'm, you know. The fashion show, right? Right, fashion show. It was a Man. combination of things, right? It was sick. And it was like a party. <laughs> Man, that show was awesome. I remember, I remember watching that at work. Hey, Jay, I was at work, and they're like, "Kanye's got a fashion show coming on." And you know, you remember, you remember, he, you remember he played, he played a little bit of Wolves. He dropped the Wolves beat, and then he stopped the beat, and then, and then the other one, he showed up with the mask on at Madison Square Garden, and the, you know, he did the Daft Punk thing. He showed up, and everybody's like, "Is that Kanye? Who's that?" You know, he did, he did a whole, he did a whole MF Doom thing with the mask on there. And then, you know, he drop a beat a couple of seconds up, the crowd go crazy. Then he'll stop the beat and tease him and leave the microphone. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, he he's on a different level, man. Like, you know, that, that Pablo, man, that Pablo and the fashion show. And the, did you see how the Kardashians were dejected and isolated at the fashion show? <laughs> and, the fans, right. and the fans were around him looking at him like, say something. I was like, what is going on? I mean, it was a weird vibe, man. I mean, I say like, <laughs> I would say Wolves, man. Wolves did it for me at that fashion show because did he, you know, he had he was talking about finding Jesus on Wolves. I'm listening to this just like, what's going on here, Kanye? Because he it's a lot of Jesus reference in the track Wolves. And don't forget, Pablo changed three or four times. So when they right. released Pablo every week, the album production changed. And so that's the first album ever that 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 basically was organic situation. It kept evolving. Every week there's a different hook. They added new lyrics. Cuddy, uh, not Cuddy, but uh, Chance the Rapper's verse change. Right. And I'm listening to this because you know I remember I downloaded the album. I, yeah, I'm wrong, but I downloaded the album. I didn't want to. I didn't want to wait for it on Spotify. And the version I got of Pablo was different than Spotify. Totally different. Right. It's funny. I remember when the cameras went to the Kardashians at Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. I saw like twitter or facebook or somewhere somebody had the, the the meme that man this is the farthest the kardashians have ever sat back in, in a stadium in their whole lives and it was a kanye album release which is pretty funny um but it's actually funny so you brought up that point about daft punk right and, and then kind of collaborations mm-hmm. honestly in my opinion and i'm obviously biased right there is nobody better at collaborating when when it comes to Kanye picking whether it be who he wants on a song for like a quick verse who he wants to sample so like Daft Punk right people forget Stronger was a Daft Punk sample like that is a straight up rip from Daft Punk and you go um Blood on the Leaves that was Skrillex yeah like what other hip-hop slash rapper can mix in a Skrillex hook (laughs) a Skrillex beat Mm -hmm. into their album right so it's it's Skrillex, and then all the lights, you know, take your pick on who else is on that thing. You know, Everybody. Fergie, Elton John, you know, t- take your pick, right? Cuddy. So, you know, and that's another, like, sec- you know, it's funny, right? So, like, every collaboration is so sick. And, Jay, I remember me and you were talking about this back in the day, but uh, Dave Chappelle went on a late-night talk show. It might have been, it was, like, Letterman or it was somebody big. And he was telling the story about the first time he met Kanye. And this is right around college dropout. I'm not sure if it was out, if he was still recording or what, but Kanye was just starting to come on the scene. And he's talking about how, you know, he, he gave, it was when Conan, Common and Kanye did that, did, did their show. And, you know, he's obviously spending time with them and they're hanging out. And I guess they're in like Chappelle's like back room and Kanye's phone rings. Kanye picks it up and he's like, uh, hey, I got to call you back. I'm talking with Dave, um, you know, hit, hit me up in, in an hour. And Chappelle was saying how it goes quiet. And then Kanye is letting the, the other guy talk on the phone. Kanye, you know, the, the other guy says something and Kanye goes, because I, a, a, I live a dope life and I do dope shit. Click, hang up. And so like, if you think about that now, it's like, yeah, Kanye does in fact live a dope life and 
yeah, I'm sure I think he checks the box of doing dope shit or whatever <laughs> falls under that category of dope shit. He does it. Um, so anyways, that was a funny story. So I remember Jay telling me that and just start, and we both just started busting out laughing because yeah, it's true. <laughs> but that's kind of that like cocky Kanye who's sort of where he was and where he is now probably has, hasn't changed a bit. No, well, not think, at all. Not at all. But think, think about think about I don't like he influenced he influenced I don't like was the chief Keith. He influenced Big Mensa, uh the Big Mensa track, man. You know, uh oh man, I mean it's 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 bigger than just hip hop, you know, it's it's co- it's coastal. I mean, every Chicago drill rapper's got an element of Kanye in their production. It's hilarious. Right. Like, like I was listening to uh Lil Dirk the other day, and I'm not, you know. Dirk is decent, but but you hear you hear what Drake took from Dirk, that Dirk took from Ye. You know that's that Chicago influence. Chicago has his own style, so you know you know you know the whole tr- the whole track laugh now cry later. It sounds like a Ye track. You're listening to this track and you go like I know that I know I know um, Drake's production has a lot has a lot of Kanye babes if you think about it. The same thing. The same thing. You think about uh, some of these other artists you started hearing that that came out recently. I mean, I think that um, yeah, you know, some of those comments, man. Like, you know, he makes out loud the stuff that you wouldn't say to somebody. It's stuff you say in your head, but you never say it formally out loud. That's what makes Kanye <laughs> right. so interesting. Like through the wire. Think about through the wire. He told the story about he broke his jaw, and then you got other rappers paying paying homage to when Ye broke his jaw. You know, Rick Ross says it best. Rick Ross says it like, you know, when Ye, you know, Ye basically pretty much is going to see the Lord, went up to went up the stairs to see the Lord and came back. And I love that relationship. I love that Rick Ross, um, the Rick Ross, um, you know, Kanye connection is really awesome. You know, when they, you know, when they did that, when they did that track, man, uh, when they did the track on a beautiful dirt night, a beautiful twisted nightmare, man, you know, the way they the way they spit, he even he even made Ray Kwan come to his level. You know, he made everybody level up. And you think about Monster, the, se- the segue into the Monster track, that's the most underrated hip-hop track of all time. <laughs> right. Jay, I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. Who that? was part of that Glow in the Dark tour? There were three acts. And was you were it? standing next to me. Granted, you've, you've been to more concerts than me, for sure. Oh, However, man. You put me on the spot, because I'm thinking, like, was... Oh, the glow in the dark one. Wasn't it Rihanna? Wasn't it That's Lupe? One. Lupe. Speaking of Shy Town guys, and mm-hmm. he's obviously fallen off a little bit as of late. But when he he released the cool, Kanye was like the number one backer of that whole album, and it's a great <laughs> album, right? Yeah. And I think about that. Right. Fast forward to the Yeezus tour. Kendrick mm-hmm. Lamar opens up for Kanye, and where's Kendrick now? So it's like. Yep. To your point about and Kendrick, he's not mm-hmm. he's not a shy town guy, but well, he kind of, I guess his parents are so by mm-hmm. association he sort of fits. But I think to your point, like Kanye is finding people who obviously have that same, you know, they have it right. Unbelievable at hyping them up and kind of putting them up on that stage to have them take off, right? So I go back to my like point guard analogy, right? He's mm-hmm. the John Stockton, he's the Chris Paul for all these other guys out, out there to, to, to open up their game. Don't forget Nerve is on that tour. Oh, Nerve, that's right. What? Oh, don't forget man. don't forget the lap dance, lap dance influence. That's, that's, right. that's, the, that's the sexual side of Kanye. So there's the religious side, the sexual side. There's the, there's, you know, the no parties in LA side. There's a lot of different Kanye West that's personalities. Right. So, I mean, that's nerd. the first time I saw Nerd. You know, I, I always was a Nerd fan. You know, they had weird videos, but they never did tours until they did the Glow in the Dark tour. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, Pharrell. Right. I, <laughs> and think about the Pharrell Kanye um, collaborations. Those have all been fire. <laughs> all, right. Excuse me, miss. Think about that collaboration. That's that's a, that's, right. that's a Pharrell. That's Pharrell singing the hook. That's Ye on production. It's a beautiful right. track. And Jay and Jay just being Jay. So speaking of the Glow in the Dark tour, um, uh, Jet, when you were uh, bringing it back to um, my broke ass trunk that had the bungee cord, because I totally <laughs> forgot about it until you you trigger like memory gave me a trigger memory <laughs> right now. I was rattling that shit still with the with the joints with with all the tracks, but um, 
we went to the glow in the dark tour at the uc and i kid you not i think i think it was like the very 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 back seats if i'm not mistaken like I, I didn't check if you know the Kardashians were invited to that one, but this is, <laughs> this is way before Kimye. But we were like, we, we were so amped up, like we were front row, bro. Like it was, yeah, man. It was lit for real, man. I mean, we were just like loving the vibe and just you know eating all uh, all the energy up for sure, man. Because so, I saw him, I saw him a lot that same week. Oh, for real? Okay. Yeah, he was at Lala. Okay. Had, yeah, Lala, you had nine inch nails there that day. He closed out, you know, he closed out that final day in Lala Palooza. And I remember I was downtown and I, you know, I bought the tickets off the street and I walked over to see it. And because the thing is, you could, you know, Lala Palooza, you ain't really got to go to the concert. I went there and Yay came out and there was a young Vic Mensa there at that, at that set. Oh. And then, you know, there are a lot of artists up there. You don't know who they are. Like, don't forget, um, uh you know uh you know ryan fest ryan fest was in the click at that point <laughs> you know he was part of you know he was part of good music and man yay came out there and yeah had just done uh going the dirt tour that same week so he no, energy was abundant man he was he was he was in that special that special area man where only certain rappers go and, and performance entertainers it's like watching michael jackson do off the wall a thriller at that point you only get that <laughs> once in a life Lifetime, whatever. I saw Michael at Soldier Phil with my mom when I was a kid, and seeing Kanye pretty much dominate his own city is awesome. You know, it's nothing like killing right. your own town. <clears throat> yeah, one well, one more quick story about Jay. So, <laughs> as mentioned, Jay brought me to uh, Touch the Sky tour, right? And as I kind of mentioned on the intro, that was honestly my first concert in however many years since Backstreet Boys, right? So we're talking- Is that at the um, the USC Pavilion? I forget where it was. I honestly didn't. No, it had to be at the United uh, States. You know what? Maybe it was USC. That's Either USC. way, it was- Or I'll say- So Korea? I was probably I young grade school, right? So, yeah. <laughs> and I remember driving in the car with my, with my mom and Jay calls her. And this was Jason giving my mom the, you know, Obviously, there will be some uh, vulgarities and <laughs> Jet's going to see a lot of things a grade schooler normally doesn't see. However, you know, you've seen Fantasia from American Idol, right? She's going to be, be the opener. So it's a family <laughs> show. Like, so don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. And oh, by the way, here's kind of my point I'm making. Like, by the way, you know, and my mom's name is Jill. I remember him because he was on speakerphone. I remember going, and you know, Jill. Kanye is the, the kind of artist who there's a ton of, you know, piano, there's a ton of, 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 of orchestra. So it's like a symphony feel. So really it'll be a good education for him to, oh, be able to, to hear it all. And Bro. to that point, right? Like one of the things that Jay always told me was he's always any song that, that has piano in it. Jay's always like been a fan of because, yeah. because growing up, right, his his dad would play it and he would kind of hear it in the background. So that's kind of where, 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 where that stays in, right? So speaking specifically to Kanye on that point, after that sell job to my mom, she was like, oh, okay, great. Yeah, he'll, he'll learn about it. Okay, cool. Moving forward, I still think Kanye is one of the best at involving that symphony feel into his songs, right? And that like orchestra feel where you, where you can hear the piano, you can hear the violin, you, 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 you know, pick out instruments and, and you can hear it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be able to do that while collaborating with Daft Punk, with Skrillex, with Cuddy, with Chris Martin from Coldplay and, and you know, and the names go on, right? Like that's, like that is kind of, in my opinion, why Kanye separates him himself. Like I, I hear personally, like okay, Drake's got a new song coming out. Okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. You know, Jay Z's got a new album coming out. Okay, that's yeah, I'm sure it'll be great. I mean, but in my opinion, like, you know, am I gonna go out of my way to like stay up till midnight to like hear it? Probably not. You know, <laughs> I got, a, I got a life now, kinda. I, I, I pay taxes, right? So I, you know, I, you know, I think. You know, that was a long tangent, my, my bad. But, you know, what makes, in my opinion, why Kanye will always be the best is that, like, he just has that presence of, of, about him and his product where, and, 
to be honest, this now flows in into shoes and clothes, right? Like to Jay's point earlier about the gap. Um, I, it's just, you know, I, it's just something that no one else, in my opinion, will have, you know, the, 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 the power one, but even like just the, the capacity to be able to do at that, that level. I love that. I love that. You took me back to an awesome memory <laughs> selling, selling your mom on Kanye on the good ass education. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you got your good ass job, bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yo, I mean, like you bring up the gap thing too. And I, I definitely want to geek out on Kanye for sure. And, you know, Jet, like you were saying, we could do this for five days, five hours. I'm curious on the gap story though, to like, I thought I heard he was almost like sort of like working for them for free just to kind of like get the his own like clothing education going on but i thought like almost like the fashion industry kind of like shoved them away right they did they did they they what what it was in that situation is he you know he started working he was working at nike for a bit these yes. shoes behind me pretty much I, I still own these these are the original nike yeezys and i got those and i got the red october's and so what happened is he made a great shoe. And I think a lot of people at Nike said, oh, shit, people are buying these shoes. So the thing is, the first Kanye's sold like out instantly. This before the sneakers app. This is this is when you went to a store and said, I want to get those. I want to get those Yeezys. And you, I remember going to the mall and buying these guys behind me. And there was no line. There was no fanfare. I bought the shoes. And everybody's like, they're not going to sell. They're trash. But they go in the dark. These came out. These came out around the time of going the dark tour. So these these actually easy go in the dark. And a lot of people thought it was trash. And he's too weird. This is a Jordan. You know, it's a Jordan brand company. And there was a lot of competition there. So they shunned him. He, you know, he leaves for a while. He goes into Exodus. He does some work with Louis Vuitton. He goes to Fashion Week. They shun him again at Fashion Week because they say he's too over the top. And they end up collaborating with other artists from Illinois. I'm not going to say, well, Chicagoland artists. You know, you look at uh, you look at the situation with Off White. And you look at that, you know, that's Virgil. You know, you get into the world of Virgil. And Virgil and Ye were friends. So the weird thing is, Virgil took a lot of Kanye's ideals and took those over to Louis Vuitton. You know, Louis Vuitton logos that glow in the dark. Where did this happen? It happened with those shoes. And then, you know, and people are like, oh, my God, Virgil, you're a genius. And then Off White came. Then, you know, you had other brands and then he ended up signing with Adidas. And I remember I bought the first Adidas Yeezys. I got them out of California from Calabasas. And so I had to connect out there. He sent me the first Yeezys. And, you know, I wore them like a dumbass, to be honest with you. I wore a pair of shoes right now, which are iconic. And I tried to clean them up. And I think I might get them, re I might get them remodeled. I might get them re uh, reupholstered and everything and keep them. Right, and, right. Um, you know, it's just that, you know, he struggled to get it in fashion. He paid a lot of dues. They made him do a lot of internship work. They took his ideas. He ended up at Adidas. And then Adidas and him blew the hinges off. He brought Adidas back from death. You think about it. Ultra boost. 100%. Ultra boost, man. Ultra light beam. Think about these terms. He's marketing in his songs. And then, you know, and then you started selling Jesus socks. You know, it's just like he, he went from hip hop fashion to church hip hop fashion. And now, and now he's selling shoes that people say I won't wear them, but I keep seeing them. You know, it's like he sells out every Saturday. You know, it, it, that's impressive. You know, he's made Adidas almost a bigger brand than Nike right now. There's, you know, J Jordan still is the pinnacle of hip hop culture. You know, in shoes, but Kanye is closing that gap so fast right now, and, and the gap thing is gonna make gap thing is gonna really push him over the edge. You wait, you wait until he starts selling uh, gap quality shirts. His quality of shirts is pretty good, but the gap is going to take it to a new level. Right. Wow. So you, you, you're thinking that that's still on the way because I, I thought it was kind of like shelved, but there's, mm -hmm. still, there's a whole bunch of stuff brewing behind the scenes. Okay. It's coming because Kim's got to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's coming, man. I, I mean, I think, you know, Ye Moose had to be there with different drama. It's like with these shoes. He's got so many variations of the Yeezy. At Adidas, I lost track of it. You know, I used to buy like I used to buy certain years like Wave Runners, seven hundreds, and stuff like that. I've made a lot of money with Kanye. I hate to say it, unfortunately, it's like when you buy these shoes, they resell instantly because the hype beats. You got to think about Kanye made suburban kids relevant again. Every suburban <laughs> kid has Yeezys right now. 
When you bring the mall to 14 year old kid, the 14 year old Jewish kid from Northbrook, and he's like, I got those Yeezys. And I'm like, you got, <laughs> we got what? He goes, I got a size 14. You got a 14? Okay, how much? 600 bucks. Uh, yeah, 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 we could do that. You, t- you, take, you take a cash app, you can Venmo me. I'm like, what? So, like, so Kanye totally changed the way shoe economy works right now and clothing economy. Think about Travis Scott. There's no Travis Scott if there's no Kanye West. There's no Cactus Jack, you know, to be honest with you. And I love Cactus Jack stuff, but if Kanye doesn't go first, no one believes in Travis. Travis can't be who he is without Kanye, you know, taking it to a new level as an artist. Yeah. Because they brought so, Travis in to replace Kanye at Nike. Now think about it. So is 808s and heartbreaks mm-hmm. basically the reason why the whiny rapper genre kind of got birthed? I mean... Is that why? I mean, Drake obviously is arguably <laughs> successful in his own right. Yes. But did he did he basically birth Drake's like bread mm-hmm. and butter? I mean, you know, obviously he he he's so innovative that he doesn't stay in the style for very long, right? So I that it always and 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 a heartbreaks album kind of like that blew my mind in so many different ways. How many artists have that album right now? He, but he took that he took like that stuff from Outkast though. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the love below. The love below is 808s and, 808s and heartbreaks. So Outkast dropped an iconic album. You know, uh, Speaker Boss you can keep. I hate to say it, I love Big Boy, but but you know what? Dre was Dre was in Dre was at the top of his craft in in, in love below. There you had never get there again. And I hate that as an artist that you would never see an Outkast album again. That'd be that good. And then, and then, Ye, then Ye, Ye saw it, took it, put a waste out there, and it's that same style. It's that love relationship, finding God, and then at the end of the album, he wraps it up. That's what Eight Ways and Heartbreaks is. RoboCop is my favorite song on there. It's like, same. man, same. I love RoboCop. So, speaking of that track, there's if you, I'm, I don't know if you've heard this or not, Jay. You you actually showed me this. There, if you kind of go into the you know depths of the internet, there's a V1 of what is now uh, like the actual you know RoboCop song you hear on the album. There is a stripped down version that's similar to Homecoming, as Jay mentioned earlier. It is, it, it doesn't slap as hard. Like there isn't as much like. Mm-hmm. You know, there's not as much instrument behind it. It's more of a minimalism kind of thing. But to be honest, in my opinion, I kind of like it a little bit better because it's a little more like chill and a little more pared down. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I've heard that one before. That one, that one's like, it's like really cool shower music, I call it. You know, you get ready, you, yeah. you get ready to go to work <laughs> in the morning, you get it on, the water comes down a certain way. That RoboCop is smooth. But yeah. I think, but his life, his life, his life, his life is mentally turbulent at that point. That's why it slaps. I think to be honest, with you. he started slapping those, those hard, those hard drum lines on it. Because Kanye is an 808 master. When he, when he puts yeah. a drum line on a song, like you, you listen to like even what he did to Rita Franklin, even did, uh, even what he did to Rita Franklin's um, "Through the Wire" that sample. She was pissed about "Through the Wire." <laughs> she, she hated mm-hmm. him for that song because he threw the 808s on there. She hated it. And I, I love that song, but Rita Franklin said, "No, he destroyed my song." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It awaits is very interesting for me because um, I kid you not, my older son he was like maybe a, almost infant stage at that time, and we would constantly play that album on repeat because the drums were like so soothing. Like it's the only thing that would put him to sleep. <laughs> It was like that, and then we would throw some like Watch the Thrones in there too, and that would like throw him to sleep too. Not not much so for the second one for our second kid, but definitely like something about like the, the music there. It kind of takes you in a different world. Um, it, it puts my it puts my eight year old to sleep. I hate to say that I put on eight oh eight in the car when I want her to be quiet right. and get off Roblox, <laughs> and I look I look back there and she's like stop. No, no, she's taking a RoboCop song in the back. So I, look, I look back at her. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Stop. And then when she says, I look at my wife goes, what are you guys talking about? It's almost like, if you think about it, um, so eight, so you go from uh, Love Below, 808's Heartbreak, to Tyler Creator. Now think about this. 
that parallel those three albums. Those three albums all sound the same. And Kanye did the and Kanye did the production on Tyler's album. So right. think so that's the funny thing about it. Like I, you know, I didn't understand Tyler Crater until I started looking at the production credits. And I'm like, why do I like this album? It's the Kanye DNA. And you think about it. I mean, like even still one of the other tracks we haven't talked about is Mercy. Mercy is vicious. I mean, you can take two chains and two changes on a track, and he basically hits the beat because two chains always off beat. Sometimes he going he ca- he has to catch the beat. That's the first track with two chains basically hit the beat. Like man, eight away for eight away. He's flawless on Mercy <laughs> in that situation. He can't even do that in his own production. So you're right. He is the greatest point guard. You know, he, he's up there sitting there like Magic Johnson in terms of curving right. defense right now. What did you like about um? What I mean, what what did you what did you like about like you know right now? You remember when they did the good music drops? Is there any song from the good music drops that you liked? Great, right? great question. So, yes, and the short answer is Good Friday, uh, and it's ooh. exactly and it's because if you listen to it, that is like the first time that Kanye sounds happy. <laughs> in however long th- yeah. that it was and it's and you hear the beat right and it's like these drums and the piano and all these people are like you know it's a big collab i forget who else is on the track but absolutely and what's what's funny is that was when i first learned how to drive so the song i could only get it on uh youtube because this is like pre-spotify this is pre you know streaming right so i'd be new driver on my phone trying to get the YouTube app open and you got to keep the app open, right? Cause if you close it down, it'll, the song will stop playing. So I'm a new driver swerving all over the road, trying to get this thing set up on my phone, eating up all my data, by the way. And I'd be, you know, bang a new Good Friday. And what was so great about it, cause I'm pretty sure all those songs came out on Fridays, right? I mean, that was kind of the whole concept, right? So it'd be like, school's out, I'm about to head home. And I'm banging Kanye swerving all over the road as a new driver, which is, you know, not great in hindsight, but I can talk about it now and, and laugh about it. Yeah, Good Friday's awesome. Awesome. I, I look forward to every one of those Friday drops. I remember when it stopped, I got sad for a little bit because he went dark for a minute after that. You know, then, you know, then uh, Good Music kind of disbanded. Cuddy went his way, you know, in that situation. Then Cuddy came back, you know, uh, they they had, they had good stuff going over there, man. And then you know we didn't even we didn't even touch upon like uh, the B album. The B album to me is a Kanye West album all the way through. I mean, Commons yeah. B, that's some of the best production. He was he he that was that's the Chicago Soul album. You listen to that album, B is like the Chicago soundtrack. You know, for West Side, South Side, Downtown, everything. I mean, B is beautiful. I mean, like that's the one that's the one piece of vinyl I can't find right now. I've been looking for B for a minute. So um, now that you brought up B, um, another one, a uh, bit of a tangent I'm thinking about is mm-hmm. I already talked about like the Trap Cock Quest um, mm-hmm. line, right? The other line, and again, like these aren't groundbreaking Kanye quotables, but there they were ones that kind of pop up top of mind for me. Um, and I think it's from Homecoming, actually, like the whole line about <clears throat> I never fuck with entertainers because they always leave. So, I mean, there, there, there's there's so much to unpack there, right? Because obviously, he's not in Chicago anymore. But I connect it to another weird line where there's a bunch of through lines about, I don't have the quotable in front of me, but like him not wanting to go to LA. I think there's that kid out song, No More Parties in LA. Mm-hmm. I, I want to say there's a, a line in 808s or somewhere after that where it's like, I, I'll never fall in love with a girl from LA. But he's almost like, throwing it out there as a self-fulfilling prophecy about Kim because he obviously is about the LA life to some extent. <laughs> and, you know, he he didn't listen to his cautionary tales. So <laughs> anyway, I, I just think about, he, he airs a lot of his dirty laundry for sure. You know, whether it's therapeutic, whether it's cringeworthy or just whether it's, you know, something you can latch on to. But I don't know. I think there's always like an accessibility to him as, an artist, the way he crafts the lyrics. Um, you know, Jed, you're talking about the story of me trying to smooth talk your mom for you to get into the show. Like, I think the funny thing about that is that I'm glad you were along for the Kanye ride 
in to a certain extent, even from a young age. And it's like, there's so many things that you can latch on to through his narrative, through his career. And it's, it's still like kind of like car crash quality too, to a certain extent, as far as like some of his latest antics. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I just hope he's just got a lot more to offer, you know? You know, what do you think about what do you think about your you remember that line from Flash and Light? She don't believe in shooting stars, but she believes in shoes and cars. <laughs> okay, okay. I remember the first time I heard that I was driving, probably like probably like you jet in the situation. You listen to Yay, he say something, you driving, and you have to stop for a minute and rewind it and hear it again. You're like, because you know, like Jay-Z has always been a setup, man. Nas and Jay, like you know, they got that new song, sorry, but not sorry. And I've been I've been breaking that song down the last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, that DJ Khalid song, yeah. Yeah, it's Khaled. Khaled, Khaled, right. Yeah, you know, he's different. But, like, man, flashing lights, and then you, you get into, uh, you know, Can't Tell Me Nothing. You listen to songs on that, basically. I mean, lyrically, he's vicious, man. Like, you know, like, yeah. I mean, like Touch the Sky. You ever listen to Touch the Sky? He goes, I'm trying to write my wrongs, but it's funny. The same wrongs help me write this song. <laughs> These songs, yeah. <laughs> And you know, I'm like, what? I'm like, I rewind that. I rewind that. That's why I had. A, that's why I had an iPod in the car. I rewind that on the iPod. I'm like, man, yay, 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 up here teaching class right now in life. You know, <laughs> he's, he's had some devastating lyrics, man. He never gets due as a lyricist, to be honest with you. Because remember, he wrote a lot of Jay Z stuff. So a lot of Jay Z stuff that was dropping from the Blueprint, that's Jay's mind, pretty much. Yay wrote a lot and did a lot of production for Jay at that point. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, actually, Jay, you might know better than me. Didn't I thought I heard somewhere where flashing lights got leaked early, and Kanye, because it got leaked, he went back and he re basically redid the whole song. I feel like that was because when they, I may be, I may be wrong, but T Pain because T Pain's obviously on Good Life, right? Like no, another classic. Yeah, yep. And he was talking about the album, and apparently he told this story how. Somebody, you know, got a hold of flashing lights and it got leaked. And Kanye was so pissed off that it got leaked. Sort of like in defiance, he reworked the whole song. So the beat you hear was was basically crafted in a span of like three days, which to me is crazy because, you know, that's obviously another hit that, you know, whether it be in movies or whatever, it's, you know, it's 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 a, it's a classic beat. And that was something that was put together in a couple of days, right? right. Crazy to me. Well, he's known for doing that because they somebody leaks his stuff all the time from the studio. So he'll go back and retool a, a he'll take he take verses out, he'll change the beat, or you know what he'll do? He'll turn around and just leak it like the little the song Little Pump, you know, in the Dale Givens. You know that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you know, that that song basically it, you know, it, it came out of nowhere because there's a lot of yay songs out there that never made the albums so that he just leak like one Friday or something like that. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Like you know, I, like you say, when has he been happy? You know, well, be honest with you, I think I could count three happy times in life. You know, <laughs> probably three. I mean, I would say Watch the Throne. He was happy for a minute because you know, you know the Big Brother song. Everything he rapped about in oh, Big yeah. Brother came came to realization and Watch the Throne. That's what made Watch the Throne so pivotal because he told the Jay Z story, and you could tell he was hurting. And then the Watch the Throne came, and I kind of gave him closure on that. And they both moved forward after watching the throne, and then they broke up again. But I think it, it basically taught him that he was no longer a little brother. Because, like, you know, when he, you know, if you ever listen to Murder of Excellence on Watch the Throne, that's when Kanye graduated from Jay Z school and became a professor at that point. Because, you know, Murder yeah. of Excellence, you know, Niggas in Paris is okay, but Murder of Excellence at the end of that album, it goes crazy. And then, you know, you got, uh, the Joy, The Joy is probably my favorite um, song off, off the Watch the Throne, basically, because he was happy on The Joy. The Joy is like childbirth, where he's at as a man, and Jay rapped about where he's at as a man. I mean, yep. they had a good time. Otis was happy. That's the third time they were happy. They were really happy during Otis. It was Big Brother, Little Brother, and we're happy to hang out mm -hmm. with each other, and you finally acknowledged me as an artist. That's what that was about. Yeah. Yeah. Jay, what's your track off, off that album? Off of 808s? I mean, I'm sorry, off, off of Watch of the, the Throne. Throne. Yeah, Watch the Throne. Man, it's hard. I gotta pull it up. The one that I keep thinking about top of mind is um is is the joy track you you're referring to, Novak, the one about where they 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 kind of fantasize about their their kid, like their future kid. Yeah. 
Okay. It's the, Curtis, that... the Curtis Mayfield sample. So, so, okay. so see, he took me down the Curtis Mayfield street at that point. I went out and bought all the Curtis Mayfield vinyl at that point because I was looking for clues to what this mood was about. You know, he's talking about, you know, a little sugar, honey, a honeysuckle lamb. He describes like the greatest thing ever is having a kid. The song, the way it flowed, yeah, that's the that's the that's the joy. Okay, because I'm looking at the track list. I think it's called New Day. New Day is awesome. <laughs> so uh, that's the one I'm thinking about. And I obviously, admittedly, like you know, me being a father, it hit me in so many different levels. Mm -hmm. Honestly, every track out that album is kind of flawless in my mind. But that track, again, I keep going back to the cautionary tale. Kanye and not that it was him admitting it it was Jay basically airing out his own laundry being a self-fulfilled prophecy about like there was some line where if I had a kid and I'm paraphrasing here but it's like if, if the stuff doesn't work out between me and your mom you know just know that you were kind of created out of beauty and all this that whatever right and obviously everyone knows the doom and gloom that you know, the, the beehive kind of brought upon, even though he's still <laughs> stuck in the beehive and hasn't escaped Worthy. since. But, <laughs> but I mean, I think what I'm tapping into to kind of rant and rave a little bit is that there's so much passion in his lyrics. And Novak, I agree, he is definitely one of the greatest lyric lyricists out there, but I think it's more to it where it's like an accessibility and you can almost picture either yourself having those lyrics in your head, like going through those struggles or kind of like rooting for him on the side, right? Because I think of like, you know, Nas and the Jays and it's like, you know, I never gonna be from Queensbridge or, you know, from Marcy or nothing. So I'm kind of like admiring from afar. But when I think about Ye, like, you know, I lost the parent too. You know, I've, you know, I always been there where I felt like I was never gonna finish college. And, you know, just like all these like narratives that you can kind of latch on to. And like, even that, like, what is it like 10 minute, like last call, I forget what is it? Is it um college dropout? Like he's just like yeah. it's not even a track. He's just like talking about thank yous and like just you know ranting and raving. And I don't know. It's like you you can you can get with it. You can kind of like see and you hope you hope that him being the protagonist of all of his stories that he sees he sees it through. But a lot of times it doesn't work out that way. But you can't help but listen and watch, right? Right. That's a good thing. You talking about the Jay, you talking about when Jay talking about his rights and wrongs, and then that segues into Madden the Carter Holy Grail. And then you know the Madden the Carter Holy Grail has a lot of Yay production. And um, and then they went into 444. So right. so so basically Yay pretty much opened Jay up to telling everything he's done wrong, <laughs> being a man and being a father and being a husband. Yeah. So, so it, it went really dark there for a moment because I think that. You know, I'm, I'm listening to this and I'm just like, because, you know, Beautiful Dark Nightmare is somewhere in that evolutionary path. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's scary because these guys went through a dark phase together and it seemed like, you know, Jay came out better, I think. You know, he came out with the Carters. So the Carters was like the rainbow for him at the end when he had to get on the track. But, you know, you had Lemonade, which is was a, which is an album like um, Ye's Beautiful Twisted Dark Nightmare. That's a, that's a story album as well. So Lemonade tells the story of being cheated on all the way through. I remember listening to that. that I'm going to say that album. I'm not going to say what I think it is. I listened to that album one day. I was driving back from Milwaukee. And I listened to Lemonade. And I was like, this sounds like Beautiful Twisted Dark Nightmare for Ooh. women. That's what it is. It's for women. It's got the same, it's got the same 808s. It's got, and don't forget, Ye did a lot of production for Beyonce. He did a lot of work yes. on Beyonce's work on stuff. You can hear his production values you know. there. He had one of the greatest albums yeah. of all time. Of course, she did. <laughs> but I mean, to to bring it back to Watch the Throne, because yeah. Jed, I'm curious on your yeah. your top tracks on there. I I'm I'm super crushed on that. We never got a Watch the Throne two. We probably won't. And the closest we got was that Jay Electronica album, which I honestly am calling Watch the Throne two in my mind. Not because <laughs> I look face. up. Not that I look up to it, but almost like Jay was like on some. Man, I ain't never gonna do Watch Throne Two. Jay Electronica, I'm jumping on your shit. We're gonna do this. I'm like, that's it. I don't see that as a Jay Electronic album. No, I see that as the Jay Z <laughs> featuring Jay Electronic album uh, because yes. this Jay Jay lyrically, he steps up when you put a better artist on the track. Except for Eminem, Eminem is the only time Renegade is the only time in his lifetime when he got on and Ether was. It was an Ether moment for him. It was Ether moment part two because you know. You, you go back to Ether and you look at that, you listen to that production, 
he got smoked on that. You know, Renegade was part two of that. I think Jay Electronica, you know, wasn't strong enough on that album. He's dropping lyrics from like 10 years ago <laughs> on uh, on that album. I mean, it's a, it's a good album production-wise, but that is Watch the Throne too without Ye. I mean, I think we might get it. I think we get it. You're probably not going to care when we get it. That's the unfortunate thing about it. Don't say it. And but bro, think- you know, you know what reeks of rich, rich people problems? Like, isn't the album cover like a picture of one of their houses? I thought I looked this up, man. It's a house. One, you talking about of one of the Jay or house. Bay's houses or some shit. Like their it's summer their house. home. It's a summer home, basically. Yeah, it's, it's, it's look at what I get. Illuminati's in the background. It's like when you look at Watch the Throne, like that album, that vinyl, uh, Jet, when you open it up, it's like opening up a, It's like opening up something from like biblical times. You open it up, yes. you unfold it, and you look at these pictures right. and everything, and you're like, wow, look at this symbol over here. I see I see a falcon. What does that mean? And, you know, people are like Googling, trying to figure out the symbolism of Watch the Throne. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a $100 piece of vinyl right now. Like, I just talked to a guy earlier about it. He asked me, how did you get it? I bought it. And he goes... It's like two fifty now. Don't buy it now. That <laughs> situation, but that's probably Ye's best production. That's post. That's not a kind. That's not really official Kanye album. If you know what I mean, his production right. on that is spotless. He was. He was. Man, he he went to that place again. He did. You get. You got any standouts, Jet, from Watch the Throne in general? Yeah, you know. So if you guys haven't <laughs> picked up on this, you know by now. So. Uh, you know, I don't know if shallow is the right word, but for me, you know, any song where I can hear, like, it's like 99 Problems, right? That song come, comes on and it's boom, boom. You just hear like all these, you know, you like hear like just the culmination of all these beats, instruments, you know, whatever, however you want to describe, I don't know the right noun to use, but, you know, use your own imagination. So to that point, Watch the Throne, why I, I love you is a good one. And I say that because similar to that 99 problems, it just kind of starts and it just goes, right? So that's probably probably a top track, but like, you know, I mean, it's, it's funny too, because like picking out a favorite, right? Whether it be a favorite song from an album or a favorite song just in general, you know, I know a while ago, like there was that like, it was like a college like NCAA March Madness bracket right of like all these Kanye songs ranked and like I remember and like people were like doing this online and then like posting the pic on like Twitter and whatnot right for me I don't think I'd ever be able able to get to a champion because you know back to like my first analogy right it's like trying to compare this table that that my laptop is on to a car on the street like it doesn't it doesn't like add up Cause they're so, you know, they're just two separate things. Right. So uh, anyways, why I, I love you is definitely top, probably a top track for me. And then to Jay, to your point about new day, if we're kind of going back earlier on this, like on my Kanye playlist, right. Uh-huh. New day, last call and then drive slow are the three uh-huh. off the top of my head where, Ooh, where you nice. can just like sit back and vibe to, right. Yeah. It's just like, you know, it's real slow and it's just, you know, they're all saying what they got to say, right? But at the same time, beat-wise, it's not that big, like, production, right? It's just a chill, like, you know, one, two, three, four, quick, and, like, that's it. It just plays on, on a loop, right? And that's, you know, kind of circling back here, right? Like, that's what makes Kanye, like, and obviously Jay was part of this, but that's what makes, you know, the power of Kanye, right? It can be any kind of, you know, not sample. It can be any type of, like, you know, huge or, or like huge orchestration, or at the same time, it can be just a chill little quick drum beat, you know, quick chord, and we're done. Man, you brought a drive slow, man. That, you know where that comes from, right? The scary thing about music sometimes is when I was a little kid, my mom used to play music when we cleaned up. So when I hear a Kanye song, now it's, it's, it's something that she played when we were cleaning up. And I hated that song as a kid because that means I had to clean up the house. So like uh, Hank Crawford does Wildflower. So Wildflower is the backdrop to drive slow. And my mom used to play that when she wants to go to sleep. So, 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 so drive slow, man, it's crazy because you said it right. When you're driving in the car or something like that, because there's, you know, there's driving music. It's just like UGK. 
I, you know, you get into other forms, other forms of hip hop. There's some music you can't drive to, but you know, you put on Drive Slow, you put on Beautiful Twisted Dark Nightmare. That's driving music. You put on uh, Hell, Jesus is King. I hate to say it. I drove all the way to St. Louis right. on Jesus is King, and that's a short album. I just kept playing it on repeat, and people are looking at me weird. They're like, "He's banging a gospel album with an 808 in the background." And you no, know, it's the it's the first time the guy won a, a hip hop guy. <coughs> Won a Grammy for a gospel album, and you know, and the, and the gospel community is pissed about it because they're like, "How did this guy, who basically we think is not secular enough, <laughs> or he's he's too far off reservation, right. to win a Grammy for our or for our genre?" And you know, you don't do that every day. I mean, and I think like, um, I think back to, um, I think back to like some of the inspiration with Kanye. You think about Pete Rock. There's a lot of Pete Rock and Kanye West. And see, you know, you think about Pete Rock and see how smooth you think about that production standard, and that kind of gives you the whole tree back to try called Quest. You think about the whole Burrow thing because he spent a lot of time in New York, outside of Chicago, and he learned. You know, he took their lingo, he took their style, he was sampling their music. He he made New York hot again. To be honest with you, a guy from Chicago reopened um, hip hop in New York. Think what he did for Dipset. How much did he do to make Cameron relevant again? <laughs> so a right. lot. He did too much. He kept yeah, too much <laughs> reinventing, repurposing, reimagining. Um, obviously the sped up, you know, soul samples. Mm -hmm. Everyone ate that shit up and copycatted for death to mm -hmm. death. Um, you know, we, we were arguing that he birthed, you know, Drake and all the other whiny rappers. Um, I <laughs> no no shade on Drake. no shade on Drake. Um, so yeah, man. I mean, I guess I guess to kind of like. To, to bring it back, you know, to some final thoughts, maybe to, to wrap it up a little bit, like y'all y'all got any thoughts on like what the final next sound might be like, as far as, you know, him tapping into or kind of like, you know, like rediscovering in a way? I think it's a new genre. I yeah. think he's gonna take hip hop to a new genre, to be honest, which it's gotta do it. Hip hop's gotta evolve right now. If you think about from We Major, which is one of my favorite damn Nas tracks, yeah. I love We Major gets me going. That's one of those songs, like, you know, when I'm trying to get home through traffic, I'm playing We Major and I'm cutting through traffic. And people are looking at you like, what are you doing? And you're like, you know, it's, it's awesome driving music. But I think this guy is like, you can't put him in a box no more. He's not, you know, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a hip hop artist. You know, he's not a rapper, he's a hip hop artist. So I think he's gonna create a new genre, to be honest with you. I think we're looking at we're looking at gospel soul hip hop. That's what we're looking at right now. And I think it's gonna blow up because what man, you know, could cuss on the track and say Jesus' name 15 times. Only Kanye can do that. You know, maybe our, maybe R. Kelly before the child stuff could have did it. Uh -oh. You know, R. Kelly is the only other artist out there that could, you know, ascend to different genres like that. But I think he's gonna re. I think he's gonna rebirth hip hop. I think I think he's good for the culture right now because, you know, the Kim the, the divorce is gonna make him drop a hit. You know, this, this divorce totally. is totally. You about to see savage Kanye, and I think a, I think a happy Kanye is a savage Kanye. You think about it, he's gonna be out there. You know, you're gonna hear more songs like that little pump song. You're gonna get more club bangers. I think in that situation, he's going back to the club. He got you know, and COVID COVID's leaving us. I hope. So I think new genre is going to be a mixture of gospel and spirituality and, and, and drugs and sex. It's going to be nuts. I think I think Kanye is about to take it to a new level. Yeah, I'm I'm on the same page totally. I it's tough to put a word to it as to what'll come because you know I mean you know it's Kanye's kind of past tells us it's definitely not going to be what you expect. You know, pick an album that's come out. It, you know, in terms of what preceded that, it's always been something new, right? So, um, I don't know. I do, you know, if there's, this sounds bad, but if there's something to take kind of solstice in and feel good about is that, you know, every time he's had a negative life event, right? Whether it be the passing of, a, of his mom or a divorce or a breakup, you know, something good usually follows, right? So selfishly, it's, you know, not to say that, you know, the bar has been set, but um, I'm excited for, you know, not the right reasons probably. And I feel bad for the guy in a way, but yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, 
you know, I think about A 808s and how that, that was new. I think about dark twisted fantasy after the Taylor Swift incident, you know, it's just whatever happens negative, the guy, you know, nobody knows how to come back better. And not that he, you know, in this case, he's not coming back per se, but um, you know, I think it's safe to think that whatever genre, if that's the right word drops is going to be something that's crazy. Love that. That's, that's, that's some good sentiments y'all got. Um, yeah, Jed, I know you got to roll out in a few, but I, I just wanted to add, like, I, I was almost trepidatious to kind of run into this topic because I know Novak wanted to talk about yay for sure. And it's definitely like a hip hop milestone. You got to like, at least kind of have some perspective on. And yeah, I, I am still secretly rooting for Kanye. Like, I mean, Hell, I had freaking crack music instrumental out as my like <laughs> wedding theme song for me and my wife to walk out. So yeah, like I bleed Kanye in my 808s and heartbreaks heart. But you know, like I hear like you know the freaking like Joe Rogan podcast, and you know he's dropping some gems, but he's also dropping some questionables too. Like like I hear him like on the pod networks, and you know like like you know talking about how hard it is to kind of run. Um, a fiscal count, you know, when, when like cats is kind of like, like, um, dirty and in, in, in some of his networks. And then I'm even like gripping at even way back in the life of Pablo album where, you know, he talked about, I think one guy like robbed his lap laptop and you kind of met, had to make amends with old dude. And, you know, it's, it's like all these kind of like, like stories of, of yay that I don't want, I don't wish on anybody, but I definitely hope he sees everything through for the better. And um, to get back to like my commentary on his lyrics, like I think besides it being access accessible and dope, like he also has that comedic part to it too, right? So like he constantly loves, um, Who's that that group that Jack Black was in that rock Tenacious D, right? So I mean, like he always, yeah, I mean he always has like artists like that as a touchstone where it's like, you know, he's just offering a mirror on society and what people want to look at him, you know, look at him as, whether he's wearing a, a red MAGA hat or not. So I mean, it's like he's always trying to make some type of statement. So I just I just hope that the next statement, you know, um is definitely something to latch on to because there's plenty. There's plenty he's got to say. So, you, so, so you know, the one piece we didn't touch here before we jump toward the end of this one is uh, the whole West Coast influence. Think about what he's done with Game. Jesus Peace is is a good damn album. I, you know, I don't want to admit that, but I felt myself listening to Jesus Peace one night in the car. I mean, and it's got, you know, you think about it, it's gospel West Coast hip hop. And you know, and I'm like the first, you know, you got gospel, you got gospel blood music playing right now. But Kanye did a lot of production. Of the, you know, the Jesus Peace track alone is man, it's devastating. You know, that drum beat, the arrangement, he made game sound awesome. And I like game, but I thought game is better with G on it. But when Ye got with him, he unlocked the part of game that we never heard before. You know, you know, the track standing on Ferraris and stuff like that. You know, you're feeling lonely. You know, you hear Kanye singing the hook in the background. You're like, wow. I mean, you know, he did a lot of work on Jesus Peace. That's a that's an unheralded album they did production on. It's just to say. I love that album. Yeah, and there's plenty like collabs that we we haven't touched on. Yeah. I actually have this like CD that I literally wrote a hundred Kanye songs, and the reason why Still I wrote it. It's like an MP3 CD, but it was my my point was like to throw all these songs that he never even had on his album because any song that he kind of touched was just ferocious in its own right. And I know there's plenty more than a hundred, but I just had to like you know line wire download as much as I could at the time. But um, yeah, I mean, he's definitely a game changer. He doesn't stay in one lane, and he's definitely not rock. He's definitely not hip hop. I mean, he's just like, he's, 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 you know, you just can't categorize the guy. So too much to say. Too much to say for Ye. What, man? I mean, great artists, man. Great artists. 
You're right about that, Jeff. We can go five hours talking about it. We just scratched the surface right now. <laughs> right. This, this guy does too much stuff. I mean, there are artists we could talk about, and we have to make up stuff to finish the show. This, <laughs> this guy could be two hours of nonstop, and people will listen for two hours talking about Kanye. Is that scary? Uh, Gabby, you want to go to the Gabby, you want to go to Sugar Records after this and go look for man, more vinyl? Man, bro. <laughs> I want that cruel summer vinyl right now. It's a hundred bucks there. I think I might have to do it, man. Got to do it. Uh, <laughs> Hide it in my house, it's like Mother's Day to me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I guess, I guess, you know, again on, on the final thought tip, like uh, Novak, I know you got a soft spot for Chicago artists in general, so it's it's nice to root for somebody that kind of has you know changed the game in so many ways. And you know, Jet, you kind of being born and raised in Chicago and finally coming back, you know, not, not being like a entertainer that always leaves you back, you back with us. Yeah. <laughs> right. Not quite. <laughs> well, yeah, man, it's been, it's been good to have you on the show, bro. I appreciate it. You know, um, definitely, definitely to scratch the service for sure. Yeah, same here. Appreciate you guys having me on. Definitely good to have you, Jed. That's time that's a Sunday service. We're going. That whole group, yeah. man. We're going to Sunday service, man. And then we're going, and we're going to do a podcast from Sunday service. Yeah, emergency podcast right after. <laughs> Live on the spot. You want to uh, close us out, Novak? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for, uh, for listening to this episode. Yeah, this has definitely been a good one. You know, definitely thank Jeff for coming through, talking about some good music, talking about, you know, taking us down that, that memory lane of, Man, good hip hop. You know, there's so much bad music out there right now. I need an episode just for bad, you know, more more bad guilty pleasures right now. I found myself listening to Six Nine the other day, and I, I, you know, I'm ashamed, but I did listen to Six Nine. But anyway, I want to thank everybody for listening to this episode. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Audible, Spotify, Amazon, Red Circle, anywhere podcasts are available. Thank you for coming out, and once again, it's hip hop hits. Peace. Cool. Cool. Appreciate you guys.